So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll cover the main highlight features and do an overview of Canon's new C70. And do know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below, as well as a pinned comment. And also note, this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. Released in the fall of 2020, Canon's new C70 starts a new lineage in their current RF lineup, now with cinema-ready capabilities. At first glance, it looks almost like a beefier 1DX or 1DC, and in many ways it is, but it simultaneously melds their XC series along with the EOS R and cues from the C200 and C300 Cine cameras. And as such, it's quite an exciting mashup between a variety of cameras in their current lineup, and surely one that breaks the mold. In some ways, it's the spiritual successor to the C100 series, and Canon's releasing this camera as the new entry point into the EOS cinema line, aimed at filmmakers wanting a smaller and lighter option. On paper, it combines the best of both worlds. It's small, compact, with all the high-end video features of the C300 series, and it takes much of its quality, build, and design, but adds much needed portability and mobility. Technically, the C70 doesn't have a direct rival, and it's currently one of one in this particular segment. It obtains the latest 8.85 megapixel Super 35 CMOS sensor and Digic DV6 processor from the C300 Mark III, but it also gets Canon's next generation dual gain output, DGO technology, which produces 16 plus stops of dynamic range. Essentially, DGO achieves this range by combining two separate gain readings on a pixel level. One reading emphasizes saturation in the bright areas and the other reduces noise in the dark areas. In doing so, the camera generates a greater dynamic range while simultaneously reduces noise and it enables superior low noise HDR video but crucially the C70 becomes the first EOS cinema camera to debut the RF mount and this gives filmmakers access to Canon's latest RF collection of lenses which offer superior optical performance to equivalent EF lenses and this camera also supports all of Canon's current EF to RF adapters on the video front, this camera shoots DCI 4K 60p natively or 120p via the SNF mode, along with 2K 180p. And videos record to Canon's XF AVC standard, all I, or long gop via H.264 compression with data rates of 410 megabits per second and 10 bit 422 color. Alternatively, the camera can shoot in the MP4 format with H.265 compression with data rates of 225 megabits per second and 10 bit 422 color. But this newer compression method is still rather taxing on most computers, so it's not entirely realistic. The camera also obtains a slow and fast motion recording mode, which records 120p p videos in 4k or 180p for 2k albeit with a super 16 crop and shooting in this mode automatically slows the footage down in camera which is played back at 24 to 30p interestingly this mode also has an option to now record a separate audio track alongside the clip and this is useful if you want to hear sound during playback the camera also offers proxy recording to hdr modes including 4k hdr pq for HDR10 or Dolby Vision, and Hybrid Log Gamma, the HDR broadcasting standard. It also offers two flavors of Canon's log profiles, including C-Log2 and C-Log3. These profiles expand the camera's dynamic range, detail retention, and provide better overall tonal reproduction. C-Log2 unleashes the camera's full dynamic range of 16 plus stops, but it'll require more time in post-processing to grade. C-Log3, on the other hand, is easier to grade in post, but it does reduce the camera's dynamic range to 14 stops. Additionally, it now offers a look file option, which supports importing 3D LUTs, which you can use during recording. Enabling a custom LUT gives you a more accurate representation of color before post-processing. The camera also offers a full suite of advanced video-centric features. These include zebras, vector scopes, false color, waveforms, and RGB parades. It also has built-in de-squeeze and anamorphic preview, along with unlimited video recording and outputs a clean 4K 60p 10-bit 422 signal via HDMI. 
Low light performance is excellent. It features an ISO range from ISO 100 to 102 400. And since it inherits the same sensor and processor combination as the C300, its low light performance is identical. Users can expect usable footage up to ISO 6400 or 12800, approximately 27 dB gain with minor post-processing. For focus, it obtains Canon's acclaimed dual pixel CMOS AF technology with face detection covering 80% of the frame. It also obtains AF tuning, allowing you to adjust the shift sensitivity and responsiveness via the menus. Additionally, it marks the first EOS cinema camera to obtain Canon's EOS ITR AFX system, a system taken from the 1DX Mark III. This new metering system uses deep learning technology, which improves the distance measurement algorithms and improves overall tracking reliability. And it now enables the camera to support head tracking. The camera also obtains the high-end dual pixel focus guide, a feature not typically found in this class. What this feature does is provide on-screen information on the front and back focus points, and it lets you know where to set focus when pulling manually. Plus, it also has focus peaking and magnification if you prefer focusing manually. Battery life is also excellent. It uses the smaller BPA30 or larger BPA60 battery, the same batteries used on most of the C series. And Canon rates the camera at three to six hours of continuous video recording, depending on the battery size used. For displays, it features a three and a half inch very angle touchscreen LCD with a resolution of 2.76 million dots, a reminiscent setup to the EOS R and C100 series. But as far as functionality, it supports touch focus, tracking, video start stop, and controls the new touch menu. Physically, the camera uses a unique unibody design, but the camera takes many cues from the 1D, EOS R, XC, and C200 series. And in size, it's smaller in dimensions than the 1DX, but at 2.6 pounds or 1.17 kilograms body alone, it's quite a bit more compact and lightweight than other EOS Cine cameras. Nevertheless, Canon still managed to excel in ergonomics, and the camera provides a large, sturdy grip and comfortable handling. The Kinchao layout is also excellent and very much in line with their other cinema cameras. But outside of that, it also has an AF joystick, a detachable handle unit with a microphone holder, a brand new four-stage motorized ND filter rated for 10 stops, electronic image stabilization, 9x16 vertical capture for vertical video, auto ISO and gain functionality, a built-in tally lamp, a BNC timecode connector, two mini XLR inputs, a standard 3.5 millimeter microphone input, dual card slots, both of which support UHS-2 cards, a full-size HDMI type A port, a USB-C port, and several in-camera lens correction functions. In the end, Canon's C70 is an excellent value proposition, and it gives users a far more attractive way to get a similar experience from Canon's higher-end C300 Mark III and C500 Mark II cameras at almost one-third the price. And sure, it lacks a few minor features from these cameras, but it still manages to rival them quite closely. And given its image quality, superior dynamic range, low light performance, auto gain, and ND filters, it's clear Canon designed this camera for running gun shooters, and it's arguably the best option for ENG and journalism work at the moment. This camera also hints to the future of content creation with its vertical video support. And really, the C70 punches far above its weight class and creates a new breed in the cine world, but one that's now perfect for filmmakers who enjoy a smaller DSLR style form factor, but wanting higher end video capabilities and pro level features. And it beautifully combines functionality and size with the tried and true workhorse build and reliability of the cine lineup. Frankly, if you want cinema performance in a smaller mirrorless package, this is now your camera. So there you have it, my friends. There are the highlights in the overview of Canon's new C70. For more information on the C70 and other Canon cameras, check out our website, photographypx.com, go to our camera reviews page, then to the Canon section, and there you will see a full detailed written review, as well as other reviews of cameras that may be of interest to you. You can also look at the pin com in the description down below, and that will take you right to the full review as well. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we miss something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography. <laughs>